Hello everyone and welcome back to My Hero Academia Season 7 Episode 11. Uh, I'm really excited to jump into this today, not just because I, I love MHA, I'm wearing my Uraka shirt. That wasn't worth it. <laughs> that wasn't worth the, the time it took to pull that up. Um, but I also um, have had friends tell me that they are excited for me to watch this episode. Apparently it's a good one. Um, I've, I've really bloody enjoyed this season so far. And just, I mean, obviously the entire show so far. Um, but it's it's great. I was thinking about this the other day, but I feel like I, I feel like I kind of, with MHA, people have constantly in zones that I've been seeing have been saying like, oh, MHA gets bad at this point. It gets bad at this point. It gets bad at this point. You know, like, oh, season four is when it starts to get kind of shit. Like, oh no. Well, it's actually season five is super boring. It doesn't do anything and it mixes things up and it's bad. Oh no, it's season six that has some bad. Oh no, actually we weren't talking about season six. We we're talking about season seven. That's when it really starts. And so far I've heard that so many times and I've never, it's never gotten bad. <laughs> it's like just, it just hasn't. Um, I, I've loved this show from the start and I'm still loving this show. So I'm just kind of not trusting what, you know, these audiences that I'm seeing say that it, saying that it gets bad. I'm just not really trusting their opinions. I just don't think that their opinions uh, line up with mine in the slightest. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to watching this. Um, make sure to uh, support the video if you can. I'm a small channel, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you like my vibe, if you like my reaction, go check out some other videos on the channel, my other MHA reactions, my reactions to other shows, and I have a channel called Gent Watches One Piece, which you can go and watch my One Piece reactions over there, which is really good as well. We are now post time skip in One Piece, and I'm really enjoying it still. Um, and I have a Patreon account. If I haven't mentioned it already, you can go there for my full length reactions. You can watch the whole episode with me. Just Got to sync it up with your own footage um, and early access exclusive videos, lots of other great stuff. Anyway, let's jump into MHA Season 7, Episode 11. But I have no interest in this path towards progress oh, you speak of. Yeah, that's right, Warrior Jesus. Journey. That was the strongest attack I've got. I feel like that, when he's saying that was the strongest attack I got, I was thinking about this last week. It reminds me of when Uraraka says that while facing Bakugo. Like, that was the strongest attack I had, and he blew it away. Is Victoria close? I can't reach him. You could earlier. Even <laughs> without the electromagnetic barrier, radio waves disrupt my power. I've heard nothing but stuff. Cool, the man lays here. Did we see her here before? My student is hurt. Oh, man. Her school. Yeah, it's really fucked. No, Hato. Just looking forward to our graduation ceremony. Mm. And we'll have one. Should you be up here? Mirio? Following Principal Nezu into having a bonkers graduation party for us. <laughs> a real rager. Oh. Can we win this? These three. We can at least protect everyone until Midoriya gets here. How do his so put a smile on become so serious? Let's show this guy the power of the big three. <laughs> oh yeah. Holy shit. Light fades to rain. Oh. Shut your Oh, Jesus. That boy got so angry when I skewered you last time. Oh, yeah. Which means you'll be the perfect present to toss at his feet. Oh, God. This is fucked. You're a salad of garbage compared to one for all. Mm. Okay, Nejire. Oh, shit. Oh, she had to pull it out of the way. Jeez. Oh, whoa! Octopus Mirage. That's cool. Scorpion Toxin. Holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking that crazy. He created a mouth oh, to spit it out. To have anything stronger? Oh my god! Hey, this is something stronger. <laughs> fucking Mirio. Heads up, Jesus. He's a bit out of practice, I bet, but nice. nice catch. You've got that stupid face. The name Billy. <laughs> All parts of the arena. It's a perfect gig for me since I get around so fast. <laughs> but now, I get it. You're upset because you've never had any friends. <laughs> Getting close isn't a problem. Wow. I can't hurt him much. 
Did he kind of hit Shigaraki with some emotion there? You'd see things different. Holy shit! Oh! Million destroyed. <laughs> Doria gets here. Gotta keep him busy. Hell yeah, Dynamite. a million. We're still in dire need of your firepower. Oh! Holy shit! Let me give you first aid. We can handle the rest ourselves. Oh! Shikaraki is operating on a level we couldn't fathom. <gasps> Despite only being a student. Jesus. Fredericks take time to recover. You did an excellent job. I like that best genius is just like <laughs> like his dad. <laughs> now, right side. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> Wrap around. Oh. Back. No. He's badly injured. Yeah. Yet. He's still. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! That's an intense look on his face. Oh, I love it. You'd want to protect them. Destruction would be the last thing on your mind. Ooh. Prince? <sighs> Miku and Intomo were feeling. Miku and Tomo said I was really nice, and Mon always barks to go on walks with me. <laughs> so there, you've got no idea what you're talking about. Oh, he's so childish you know, now. <gasps> I I like that. There's still that. Sorry. That childish side of him, and that uh, that's in there. Is that just now sensitive subject. My bad. More importantly. My bad. <laughs> Miri is so sweet. Your body is durable. Hmm. Tomura and I are supposed to be fully combined. No hmm. delineation. A presence that's neither Tomura nor all for one. Oh? Shimura. <laughs> Just having the real Tenko in there. I can't let this go on. Hmm. Wow, the way the fingers like part for him, like it's parting the Red Sea. What I'm really doing is buying time for you, Tamaki. Aww, <laughs> that's so sweet. Do your worst, oh. you walking atrocity. Be careful, you best genius. I got a pretty solid hit in earlier. He doesn't you need the cape anymore. Barely... I won't let you hurt anyone else. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh! No, Hato! Work lets you stretch out your fingers really long, right? Do you think that'll come in handy? And if your fingers are stretched out, uh -huh. it's super difficult to tighten. Oh. It's strange. Like if you clean the tub or polish your shoes, is your arm all gross when you turn it back to normal? Mm -hmm. I guess then you'd have even more cleaning to do. That is so weird. <laughs> Why? You I love Hato. Just because you've got a quirk that can do anything, doesn't mean you have the right to look down on the rest of Aww. us. So That's not annoying. nice. She doesn't. No one wants to hear. The more they withdrew and avoided me. Mm -hmm. Until. Um. <laughs> <laughs> here, girls? <laughs> Wait. Do you have any favorite pros or. I'm a jiggy. This is great. I'm so proud of him. He did. He, like, made the first move with Hado. Like isn't it hard to see? Oh. <laughs> like I would have thought it would have been Mirio. Are you okay? Should you be sweating and shaking so badly? I mean, Mirio helped Damajiki get to this point, but. My life now. Oh. It all goes back to that first question. <laughs> That's how I got to know both of you. How our friendships, getting close to you guys, made me so much stronger. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Dragon fruit plus spider crab plus Holy shit. Deer, plus Japanese plus 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 Japanese plus plus Oh my god. Plus 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 Asian black bear plus Jack's rock crab. Aaron Dismukes doing a Senku voice now. Or you eat. <laughs> it's not Tamajiki anymore, it's Senku. There's one per it's you using your quirk without holding back. Holy shit! You should be proud of your work, Tamaki. Wow, you're so awesome! <laughs> 
treasures gifted to me by people I respect. <laughs> it was so much easier to be self-deprecating instead. <laughs> oh! Now the weight of your words is making me stronger than I've ever been. <laughs> Holy shit! More petty tricks. <laughs> That's a fucking crazy design. Holy shit! What an insane move that I would never would have expected from Amajiki. Jesus. Oh, Hado. It didn't work. Died from a measly attack like that? Mm. Of course not. Why are you people so dense? Oh, God. Bakugo. Use your first aid on the others. Wait. Whoa. That was... I mean, Clifford Chapin, that was great voice acting. I've got to defeat him. Oh. Right, he's too good. No, please, <laughs> don't do this! Holy shit! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> right side. <laughs> he's just in the zone. He dodged the attack. Oh my god! Work like sweat he can detonate to create powerful blasts. Yep. That is pulled off by storing up sweat and launching the droplets. A uh -huh. knack that's extremely hard on the glands in his palms. Uh-huh. Began to leak out of pores all over his skin, not just his hands. Uh the resulting full body explosion gave him even more speed than he was used to. Wow, that's a crazy I justification. Trying to spot an enemy's tell. <laughs> Already an old pro at this, aren't you? Oh. Still catch up to you. Oh. Why is he pissing me off so much? He doesn't have one for all. Clifford Shaven's voice acting is right so He's good right extra. now. So why is it that panic is rising in me? <laughs> God damn! That was previous order of one for all, right? Oh, I was, uh, I was kind of a punk. <laughs> I knew it would be the card. <laughs> you have no idea how much I wanted your autograph. <laughs> oh, he's saying wanted. Oh, no. That's past tense. Oh. Holy shit! <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Oh. Poor kid. He no. really hates the rain. Hang in there. This might hurt, but you'll be. Oh. It stopped. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> oh my god. I mean... <sighs> you know when I thought like, oh my god, they're killing Bakugo? I thought it... When... Like, Clifford Chapin, no, well, Bakugo, but Bakugo stood up and then Clifford Chapin delivered the line of, like, save your first aid for someone else. Like, he did that sort of delivery of the line, right? And I thought, like, it was, it's such a simple line, but he delivered it so incredibly well. And I thought to myself, oh no, Clifford Chapin's, like, putting all his heart into this performance. <laughs> And then I had the thought of, oh, why would he do that? If, like, you know, what what, what would cause him to, like, give a performance this good? 
and what would cause that is if this was his character's final hurrah, if this was his last moments. But Jesus Christ, the this is this is a a really I I'm shocked that I hadn't had that like spoiled for me. I'm I'm shocked that. When that, that came out in the manga or whatever, I did, didn't just see screenshots everywhere. Because that's happened with certain series, where it's been a major series and a major death happens. And there's just screenshots fucking everywhere of it, you know? Um, and it's the worst. Like, when people do that, when they just post those those things, it's just, it's so bad. But, um... <sighs> It, Cause that was a that was a brutal. I need to go back to that final image. That's a brutal final image. Um. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Hang on. I need to find it. Oh Jesus Christ. That's a heartbreaking image. I mean, this is all assuming that, you know, they can't do anything in a future episode to to bring him back. But, like, I'm just going to assume he's dead for the purposes of this discussion because it's more entertaining to discuss as if he's dead rather than hold my, you know, hold my hand. Um, I, I mean, realistically, like, from a writing perspective... Bakugo had finished his character arc, you know? Like, it, it's... It's hard to think about, because in my mind, it was like Bakugo was... Like, I, I, I never considered him dying before the end of the show. Like, it just it wasn't on my radar at all, because I thought this is a character that... Um... <sighs> Like, we're probably going to end the show with, um, you know, him being, like, a, one of the top heroes. And he would take on, like, I don't know, like, the Endeavor role. Like, we might end the show with Midoriya in the number one role and, and Bakugo in the number two role. But it's, like, you know, they, they get to show off how they're both, um, they're both, like, still pushing each other, even now. Um... And I thought that might be like a like, and they would show how like Bakugo is actually much closer to Deku than you would expect him to be, you know. Um, but I mean, this episode. What I really love is that like in these episodes, Bakugo has legitimately been thinking about Deku the entire time with like nothing but fondness, like just. He's he kind of, in these final moments is like done away with with all of that like with every um every bit of like frustration and anger he had towards Deku and it's now like all that's left is love and I really I really really adore that I think that's that's just so great for his character um and like obviously we knew that he was a big All Might fan but him having that moment of like I never got to ask you for your autograph. Like, it's just, he's like letting out his inner fanboy, you know? Because him and Deku were always so alike in that. They were both like huge fanboys of All Might. Um, but Bakugo, like, all this time, Bakugo didn't want to be like Deku. And so I think every time Deku was overt about his fanaticism, Bakugo had to pull himself away from that. So he wasn't allowed to be, like, he wasn't allowed to lean into that fanaticism. And I think. Also, the fact that he always saw that All Might was, like, in Deku's corner and always helping him out made him, you know, want to distance himself from All Might even more. But he couldn't get rid of... I mean, he, he was still all that time carrying around that, like, ultra-rare All Might card in his pocket because it was so important to him. Man, like, I really, really loved that. And I just... I, I want to, like, state it again. Clifford Chapin... And I, uh, I, it might be pronounced Chapin. Like the, he's, 
a voice actor that I love so much and I always reference him and I, I always forget to double check how to pronounce his name. <laughs> um, maybe I can look it up now. It's, he, he's earned it. Okay, I looked up a, um, like a panel video and they, they announced him as Clifford Chapin, so it is pronounced Chapin. I just want to, I just want it to give him, like, full props for this, like, this episode because I think, like, a lot of mo a lot of characters in their, like, final moments, they'll have a, a, you know, a massive screaming moment, um, and that can, that's a really good opportunity for the voice actor to, like, show how much they, they're shining, you know? But Bakugo as a character is always screaming. We know he can scream. Like Clifford Chapin, he, he can scream. That that man knows how to scream. Um, so like we didn't need that. But this last moment is like Bakugo so reserved, and that and I was like truly blown away because I don't think I've heard Clifford Chapin be able to deliver a really reserved performance like this, and I. I, I loved it. I really, really did. And I think it was, it also felt, at least to me, and maybe some other people might disagree with this if they watch it on a different sound system or a different setup or whatever. Um, but like, to me, it felt like it was mixed well. And he was also speaking in such a way where it was very clear he was struggling to speak and he was speaking with the l smallest amount of energy. But I could also understand what he was saying. And that that's really important, I think, for moments like that. Especially since, like, it's something that you kind of only experience if you're watching this in the dub, because if you're watching it in the sub, you're reading it. And so, like, you, you know, you, you're not going to miss lines as much. Um, but, like, the payoff for that is monumental, because hearing Bakugo with, like, that little... That little energy, but still all of the emotion in English is, like, this there's nothing like it to me that that's just a, a mind-blowingly amazing moment and yeah I I just I want to highlight that stuff while watching this episode because I loved I loved that moment it hit so hard for me um and at the same time I feel like a lot of times when there's moments like this sometimes people who especially people who don't normally watch my channel they might jump on just for this video they would go, oh, the oh, the dub was okay, but it was nowhere near the heights of the sub or whatever, right? And I just, like, I understand the sub is what you're, you're used to and what you uh, personally connect with. But, like, I, like, every time that I see that, I rewatch all of this show in sub, by the way. I, I have seen the whole show in sub, except for this season. I haven't seen this season in sub yet, except for some clips. Um, but... I watched the whole show in sub, um, but I obviously I watch it in dub first because dub is what I connect with. Dub is what I prefer. I prefer all the choices that the dub made for all of these voices, um, and I tend to see people say that, and I go, okay, I'll I'll you know when I watch it in sub, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. And I watch it in sub, and I'm like, yeah, that's an incredible performance. I didn't like it as much as the dub performance, but it was it was really good, you know. Like I don't I don't think it's like far and away better. I actually, you know, I prefer it less. Um, I prefer the sub less, but um, I yeah, I just you know I want to give props to that because I think like dub actors don't get as many props as they should for these amazing performances, and this was like. This was one of the best performances I feel like in the show um, because it's because a lot of the other best performances were in moments where the characters got to like scream <laughs> their hearts out, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm so amazed and blown away by that. But the thing is, this episode didn't just have that moment. That moment was the nice little full stop on the end of an incredible episode already. If that moment didn't happen in this episode, I still would have ended this episode and gone, that was, like, a really, really great episode. Like, the, um, the Amajiki and Hado, oh, man. <laughs> the Amajiki and Hado moment, honestly, is, like, gets me emotional as well. Because Hado, like, I love her, and she puts a lot of, um, 
like she is just a very enthusiastic person and she does like try to connect with people and like really likes talking to people and and asking questions about them but other people find it like annoying and they mostly find it annoying because she's so strong and so they you know they they have the jealousy of talking to her but then also when she's like super nice they see it as like condescending and they also like um i think part of the reason is they want to hate her and they know deep down that they kind of can't hate her and that frustrates them because like what why is she being so nice you know she knows she's better than us um and so hardo in doing nothing wrong gets really upset by that and distances herself and the person to pull her out of that is Amajiki. I adore that. And he was just doing what Mirio did to him, which is like asking about your favorite heroes, which I think is just a beautiful little callback. It shows that, you know, it was Mirio's influence that sort of snapped Hado out of that. But it was Amajiki being brave enough to step up and, um, and actually say that to her like and actually ask who her favorite heroes are and i just like that moment is amazing to me because it's it like they were they were using a hardo moment as like a big three moment and they were showing like what's special about all three of those characters through that one interaction you know he was showing what was special about Hardo and that she like really cares about people and like is super curious about people so much so that actually she went against her personality because she thought she was upsetting people you know um it shows that uh that Mirio has this um th this influence on people that sticks with them and that continues to stay with them I mean like uh Amaji he says he shines like the sun like he he the his words actually truly stick with people and then it shows amajiki um like is such a sweetheart <laughs> and he is terrified and he is uh, like he, he does pull himself into a shell quite a lot but he is trying and he's constantly trying to improve himself and and pull himself out of his shell and follow uh mirio's example and I love all of that. I really love all of that. I love the big three in this show. And I'm shocked that, like, that Mirio, Hado, and Amajiki are still alive when Bakugou's dead, you know? Like, that's, that's sort of what's hanging over my head right now. Is like, in the moment where, like, Mirio loses his quirk back in season four, that's like a a really like impactful moment and obviously Mirio has his quirk back now but I don't I don't think that diminishes that moment back then at all I don't feel like that in the slightest it changed the characters you know changed their personalities it changed how they fought it changed us as viewers our perception of things so um it was still an incredible moment but like back then I you know in my mind I was like oh my god this is kind of like the death of Mirio so in my mind it was like Mirio, I counted Mirio dead, Bakugo alive. I just I never would have I never would have seen an episode where Mirio's out here fighting at full strength and Bakugo dies on the battlefield. Oh my god. By the way, um I I've been I've had this in my mind the whole time since I saw that death scene. But I haven't just said it outright because I don't want to spoil people on another series, especially after talking about how I hate spoilers. Um, so I'm just going to say, like, uh, skip forward, like, a minute or two um, in this video. I'm If you want to mute it, and then I'll put my hand up once I'm done talking about it. But I'm about to spoil One Piece, okay? So um, I'm going to be spoiling... A, I don't even want to tell you what part of One Piece, really, because I don't want you to know anything big happens at any given point. But I'm going to spoil One Piece. So if you if you haven't watched at least as much as I've watched of One Piece, um, then, you know, go away for a bit. Anyway, now that those people are gone, um, this 
this episode, this uh, death reminded me so much of Ace's death in that it's a major arc and he's a major character that means so much to the main character and he dies sort of with like a like a chest wound type thing and the the final image looked a lot like Ace's death and a card being beside him to sort of signify his death like the the idea of like it's like the torn up all, all my card is very much like the Vivre card that burns up from um Ace's death and I think this is very much intentional and I would not be surprised if it is directly inspired by Ace's death in in One Piece because uh, we know Horikoshi is a big fan of One Piece because he like did fan art and stuff for One Piece, um, and so like I wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to have his own moment like like that in his series. Anyway, I'm done talking about spoilers. People can come back. Um, but yeah, just just a really cool episode. I loved. Um, when Amajiki, I mean, I loved Amajiki's big moment with his huge weapon. I also loved that bit early on where Amajiki put venom into Shigaraki's arm, and then in a very Sukuna from Juju Kai moment, like he creates a, a mouth on his body that spits out the venom. That's a really cool way to like counter venom, I think. <laughs> it's a, that's really, really sick. Uh, it's like really terrifying and makes me think like makes me worried about like what Shigaraki can do but it's a just an amazing moment um and also the fact that like Tenko Shimura is like still in there in Shigaraki where you have they uh, all, all for one all, all for one's kind of consciousness was talking about how you know, what's remaining in here isn't just All For One and isn't just Shigaraki. There's something else in here. And then they show Tenko. And they even say Shimura, I think. Um, I think they also specifically say Shimura instead of saying... Because, I mean, Shimura, obviously, if you're Japanese, saying the family name is like, you know, that's, that's what they default to generally. Um, but I think also you have the reasoning behind saying Shimura... Because they're talking about Tenko Shimura, but the implication is that Nana Shimura's influence is still in there, you know? Um, that that there is a bit of one for all in there, you know? Which I think is is very interesting. Like, they could have just said Tenko, um, and it would have it would have gotten across that the the child of of Shigaraki is still in there. But they specifically said Shimura. Which, you know, maybe I'm reading into it too much, but I don't care. It Death of the author. I can interpret these scenes however the fuck I want. By the way, about that, about interpreting scenes wrong, I did actually interpret a scene uh, last week wrong, and I'm going to call myself out on it because someone else also um, also said it in a comment, but then, but I, I kind of like skimmed the comment, but I didn't take it fully in because I was worried it might be a spoiler. So I just like didn't fully take in the comment. Um, but then I was re-watching the episode. I always re-watch these episodes of MHA. MHA is one of my favorite shows of all time. So I always re-watch these episodes. When I was re-watching it, I was like, oh, I see what's going on. Back when All For One's body was dying and, um, and then they showed the, the little Quirk Erasure bullet and they showed Aerie and then All For One grows an ear and he grows an eye, Right. And the implication there is somehow All For One is rewinding. He's using the rewind quirk to, f to like, fix the body in real time, you know? And I just, like, at the time, I just did not clock that he grew the ear in the eye. <laughs> I saw the ear, and in my head, I was, like... I thought there was some sort of symbolism between before uh, behind his ear being the only thing to survive the blast, Right? I thought that, you know, like, he, you know, he's always listening or some sort of, you know, some sort of symbolism there. And then there was a glow in his eye. And in my mind, I was thinking, is he going to shoot a bullet out of his eye? Or is he going to somehow use a power from his eye to whatever? And then I think when the eye grows, in my mind, I thought, um, like, I, I was already so deep in the theory that he was going to try to erase Endeavor's quirk. That I guess I thought of it like in um, with uh, Aizawa, he uses Quirk Erasure 
by looking at people, you know, like by using his eyes, holding his eyes open, and he erases their quirk. I thought, you know, in the moment, and I, I, I thought this, but I didn't think it in words. I kind of felt this, that the eye was symbolic for he was about to erase the quirk of Endeavor. <laughs> so he, I thought in my mind, like the eye is actually a manifestation of, of a quirk that is going to take away your quirk. So the eye was going to suck in the quirk or something, you know? I know that's like a bunch of leaps to take in that, in that thing when the obvious answer was there, which is he's growing back body parts and they showed a picture of Aerie. So you can think, well, he has rewind of some, in somehow. Um, but I didn't, in the moment, I just wasn't thinking about that. I just, I just wasn't. So, you know, I miss stuff and <laughs> it happens. It's kind of embarrassing when I'm, when I miss like major moments like that, especially in a show that like, I feel like with MHA, I'm pretty good with MHA lore. I would say like, this is one of my best shows in terms of, I know these characters very well. I've seen this show a lot of times. Um, I tend to pick up on decent subtleties in the show. Um, and I have my own interpretations of a lot of these characters and stuff, but, um, but I think, you know, I, I have a pretty deep understanding of MHA generally. And so it's pretty embarrassing when it's a show that I'm so confident with that I like miss something that like they're kind of spelling out. Um, but anyway, uh, I wonder how he got rewind if he did get rewind, you know, like d is Aerie okay? Did he steal from Aerie? Or did he have like, was he able to extract the quirk from like bits they had from experiments that Chisaki did? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, anyway. That's it. That's MAJ Season 7, Episode 11. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to support this video if you can. Liking the video, commenting down below, subscribing to the channel, and go to my Patreon account if you want the full-length reaction, which is worth it for this video, by the way, because there was some, there was a lot of stunned silence. Uh, full-length reaction, early access, exclusive videos for both this channel and my Gent Watches One Piece channel. I will see you next time. Goodbye.